Hi, Mark Randa from ADI here. This is our initial stab at creating a screw conveyor model for use in the tutorial series in our new mechanical web learning portal over at Applied Design Intelligence. Although the concept structure and code are correct, I've learned a lot of things since beginning this model last week. Since that time, we've purchased the SEMA 350 standard book on screw conveyors, and we did a lot of research, which gives us a far better picture of what all the variables are with screw conveyors. So, this current screw conveyor model will be restarted so that it captures enough of the variability and design considerations to become a true powerful configurator. But, as I stated earlier, conceptually, the features and functionality present are sound, so most of what will change is the addition of new features and functionality based on what is learned from the SEMA 350 standards. Let's begin exploring the features that are configurable so far. The first is the screw segments. What this currently does is change the length of the model based on the number and pitch of the segments. We will be keeping that functionality, but also including stock sizes that can be ordered from manufacturers like Martin Sprocket and Gear. Later in the tutorial, we'll see what we can do with linking to pricing at Martin or another manufacturer for some real-time quoting capabilities. I'll start by entering an outrageous number, 200, into the screw segment field and pressing enter. I immediately get feedback telling me that I've exceeded the maximum amount of segments and that the model is adjusting to the maximum automatically. In the completed version of the configurator, we will calculate the maximum length based on actual design considerations instead of a static number, and we can also change how the error is handled. Now, I'll try one segment to get the low end error. Now I'll save the model and look at the bill of materials. Notice the quantity of plain washers as well as the part number and description of the bearing. I'll now change both the screw segments and the shaft diameter, run and save the model, then go back to the bomb and see the difference. For the washers, the size and quantity is changed to reflect the new design, and the bearing is now a completely different part. Like the segments, the pitch will soon be tied to standard values, but will have the full ability to be set to any pitch within whatever min-max values are chosen. I'll shrink the model down to four segments to make things easier to see. Then I'll change the pitch from 12 inches to 20 inches, which errors us out at 16 inches. As you can see, the entire model, including the intake and discharge structures, adjusted to the new pitch. The final version of this screw conveyor model will take dramatically more things into consideration and we'll have a lot more options. But you can already see that the bones of this current screw conveyor model are sound. The last control on the test controls form is the screw diameter. The screw diameter control has already been updated to reflect the most common screw diameters listed in the SEMA standards, but this control allows custom entries as well. I'll enter a fractional size, and as you can see,
the entire model adjusts. That'll wrap things up for now. I'll be trying to post on the progress of this model in its tutorial at least once a week, so head over to Applied Design Intelligence and subscribe to the blog to receive notifications. This is Mark Randa from Applied Design Intelligence. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.